Hi everyone, I'm Miss Katie from Rockland Public Library, and today we're going to be reading Little Red Riding Hood. This is in honor of Jerry Pinckney, an author and illustrator of more than 100 books. He recently passed away, and in his honor, I thought we would read one of his stories. This is his version of Little Red Riding Hood. Let's see what happens. In a small cottage, there lived a sweet little girl and her dear mother, who once made her daughter a lovely red riding hood. The girl cherished it and wore it everywhere, so that all the village affectionately called her Little Red Riding Hood. One day, mother cooked some delicious chicken soup and raisin muffins. Your grandmother is not well, she told her daughter as she packed the warm treats. Go see if she's faring. Mind you, little miss, she instructed, be certain to go straight there. Little Red Riding Hood set out at once. The gentle sound of the child's footsteps in the new snow, crunch, 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 kept her company. Oh, how peaceful, she thought, catching a snowflake on the tip of her tongue. I wonder if Grandmama will be surprised to see me. By and by, Little Red Riding Hood met a sly wolf. The wolf, who was always hungry, had a mind to eat her up at once, but he thought better of it as he heard the chop, chop of the woodcutters nearby. Where are you going, little one? He asked in his most pleasant voice. My grandmama is not well today, Little Red Riding Hood replied forgetting that her mother did not want her to delay. I'm taking her some chicken soup and raisin muffins. The clever creature smiled. Does she live far from here? He asked. No, said Little Red Riding Hood, just behind the mill across the pond next to the big oak tree. I'll join you, for I was headed that way said the wolf. He walked along with the child for a short distance, then had an idea. Why not collect kindling for the fire, he suggested. It will warm your granny's heart. What a wonderful idea, said the child. Look, the snow has brought down many branches. They will make a good fire. Little Red Riding Hood gathered as many twigs as she could carry, trying to bundle with the ribbon that had fastened Grandmother's basket. In the meantime, the cunning wolf slipped away to Grandmother's cottage with great haste. Tap, tap, he knocked. Who's there? said Grandmother in a frail voice. It's me, your granddaughter, replied the crafty scoundrel, doing his best to sound like a young girl. The door's open, Grandmother replied. Just lift the latch. Once inside, the wolf leaped upon the startled woman and gobbled her down whole. Then he shut the door and dressed himself in one of Grandmother's nightingowns. After struggling to get her cap down over his ears, the wolf, who was still quite hungry, settled into bed to wait for his next meal. Before long, Little Red Riding Hood arrived at the cottage. Tap, tap, she knocked. Who's there? croaked the wolf. The girl was startled by the hoarseness of grandmother's voice. It's me, your granddaughter, she responded. I've brought you soup and Mama's special raisin muffins. And I've found kindling to start the fire. Soon you'll feel just like yourself again. Just lift the latch and come in, said the voice inviting her. I can't wait to see how much you've grown. The little girl opened the door and closed it gently behind her. 
The wolf lay in bed with sheets right up to his whiskers and grandma's nightcap pulled as low as he could manage. Put the basket on the chair and come closer, he said as sweetly as he could. You're taller since I saw you last. Little Red Riding Hood, anxious about her grandmother's health, went right to her bedside. Oh, grandmother, what great arms you have, said the child in wonder. All the better to hug you with, my dear, replied the wolf. Oh, grandmother, what great ears you have, she remarked. All the better to hear you with, my dear, the wolf responded. Oh, grandmother, what great eyes you have, the girl cried. All the better to see you with, my dear, declared the wolf. Oh, grandmother, what great teeth you have, she squealed. All the better to eat you with, my dear, howled the wolf. With those awful words, the wolf leaped out from under the covers and sprang upon Little Red Riding Hood, swallowing her whole. Now, the wolf said with a satisfied sigh, a long nap is all I need for such a great meal. And so he climbed back into bed and fell asleep. The wretched creature snored so loudly that one of the woodcutters who was passing by the cottage wondered if something might be wrong with the kindly old woman that lived there. As the man approached her door, he spotted two sets of fresh tracks in the snow, leading right up to the front door. Once, oh, one set of small child's prints, he thought. The second set appears to be large paw prints. The woodcutter cautiously entered the cottage and made his way toward the noise of the rumbled so deeply that it caused the china on the cupboard to rattle. Ah, he thought when he found the wolf with the very, very large belly in a deep sleep. Then, to the man's surprise, the belly stirred. Hmm. With two strokes of his ax, he killed the wolf. Then he cut open the animal's stomach with the old woman's sewing shears. Out jumped Little Red Riding Hood with a smile as bright as fresh snow. Then out climbed the kindly old woman. Once she saw that her granddaughter was out of harm's way, her heart filled with gratitude. Grandmother had never felt better. Later, after the woodcutter had buried the wicked wolf in the deep woods, he returned to the warmth himself by the fireplace, where grandmother had started a fire with Little Red Riding Hood's kindling. All three were comforted with mother's chicken soup and raisin muffins. The sweet raisins remind the girl of home and of what her mother had told her. As Little Red Riding Hood readied herself to leave, Grandmother said, Now, Little Sweet, you be certain to go straight home. And she did. Here she is going back through the woods all the way home. The end. Great listening, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you can, Go to your local library this week and check out some of Jerry Pinkney's books. They are wonderful and there are lots of great and beautiful illustrations. See you all soon. Bye-bye.